This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by Seabag Locker Coffee. Look, gimmicks are gimmicky. Flashy videos, guns, and trucks have nothing to do with good quality coffee. Seabag Locker is all about quality. They care about what goes in your cup and how you start your day. From roast to your cup in as little as four days, that's what coffee's all about. Go to SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. Buy quality, not gimmicks. SeabagLockerCoffee.com, use promo code AAR, get 10% off your purchase. We're also brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. And welcome to the After Action Review Podcast. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez, and happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Now, I don't know about you, but every one of my birthdays, I reflect on the journey that's brought me to wherever I'm at that my birthday falls on. Last couple of years, I've been overseas. I suppose America finds herself celebrating her birthday overseas also. She's been through a lot for being as young as she is. Today, she finds herself celebrating a birthday amid a lot of turmoil, division, and some general angst. She's growing up, folks. She's growing up. She's not some little kid stumbling around. She's young, but definitely not a kid. Like all young adults, she's trying to find her own way. She's trying to figure out who she is, what she stands for, and how she fits in this insane, crazy world. She's not alone, though, is she? She has us. She looks to us for guidance and support. She looks to us to lead by example. Because the truth is, She's only as strong as our weakest. She's only as good as our worst. Together, we try to show her what the very best of humanity inside the borders we've made for ourselves can be. We don't always put our right foot forward. And we don't always show America our best side. But we always intend to do what's right. We always strive to be better than those that came before us. Now, we've made terrible mistakes. We've taken on bad habits, bad ideas, bad thinking. But there's a damn good reason that Lady Liberty bears the torch. It's so that the darkness of our own ignorance can be illuminated by reason, truth, compassion, kindness, discipline, and a passion for freedom unrivaled. That torch is hot, and it can singe, and it can burn. But she maintains, steady, vigilant, caring for us as we care for her. This is America, the good and the bad. Land of the free and the incarcerated. Home of the bravest and the fearful. Where all lives matter. Some lives matter. And no matter what life you live, you matter to someone. No one is perfect, but our union is. That union between American and America. So happy birthday, America. You're looking good for 242. You don't look a day over 200, beautiful. My guest for this special 4th of July episode is truly one of our nation's finest He has faced incredible adversity coming back from horrific injuries suffered in Afghanistan that shattered nearly every bone in this man's body and severely burned 40% of that body. He's a former Green Beret and now leader of one of the most successful real estate agencies in Texas. My guest is Levi Rogers. Hey, so yeah, so my name's Levi Rogers. Uh, I own uh, the Levi Rogers Real Estate Group at Remax Military City. Uh, what happened is uh, I spent uh, 17 years in the Army, uh, 12 of which was in 7th Special Forces Group at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, uh, before they moved to Eglin. Uh, they uh, went over to Eglin uh, shortly after I got up. And so uh, in 2009, I was severely wounded in Afghanistan. Uh, four of my guys were, were unfortunately killed um, in that IED attack. Uh, and I, I, I lived. I was the ODA commander at the time. Uh, I was a warrant officer, so I did my, my enlisted time, went over to become a warrant officer, and then uh, was fortunate enough to be selected to command an ODA in combat. Um, unfortunately, I lost four four amazing uh, men uh, that night, and um, 
and and I was the the lone survivor of that ID. Uh, I was medically evacuated to San Antonio, Texas, where I spent about two years doing a medical uh, recovery. I had about uh, three weeks in a coma. Uh, had about about 35% of my body was burned, shattered almost every body, my bone and my, my body, uh, minus my arms and my neck. And then um, what happened was uh, I transitioned out here in San Antonio. Uh, and then ended up getting into the real estate. And so uh, uh, it's been been quite a ride for sure. So, wow, I don't even know where to begin there. That is, that <laughs> very few people have an intro as powerful and as remarkable as yours. Uh, let's start with Special Forces, start with your early part of your career. Um, every It seems like every Special Forces guy, every Green Beret has their own particular reason for even taking on that challenge. What prompted you to take on the challenge of becoming a Green Beret? You, you know, it's, it's funny. I get asked that question a lot. And uh, one of the things that uh, I think really contributed to that was high school sports. I was a very competitive athletic guy in high school. I know I, know I don't carry the, the, the athleticism that I, that, I, that I once had. None but, of us uh, do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I played I played basketball, I played baseball, I ran track, cross country, very competitive guy. Uh, and then when I entered the Army, I, I, I joined the Army uh, engineer unit, which I was a, a heavy equipment operator where we dug uh, uh, holes for the, you know, for the infantry. Well, I was on my first deployment to Bosnia, and I saw these really cool dudes. You know, they're all bearded up and civilian clothes, and, you know, they had guns in the back of their truck. And I asked my squad leader, I'll never forget this guy, Sergeant Pintar, say, hey, Sergeant, hey, who are those guys? They've, they've got guns, and they're just des- dressed differently. He said, I think they're Green Berets. And so I started doing some research, and they were 10 Special Forces Group guys. And I said, man, that is cool. I want to try to be one of those guys. And so uh, what I did is uh, I started hustling, and I, I just started getting in shape, or well, better shape. And and then uh, I uh, went to uh, the Sapper Leader course uh, through the engineer uh, unit. Uh, I did very well there. And then uh, I said, you know, I'm going to give selection a shot. Went to selection, and then boom, I made it. Uh, went through the Q course, and uh, uh, I wasn't the the. It definitely wasn't the honor grad of the Q course, you know. Uh, uh, I was coming from a, a soft skill MLS. I had a lot to learn, and uh, but uh, once I hit Seven Special Forces Group, uh, I knew that I was home. I, I love that unit. That unit. Um, truly just i mean huge part of my life and so uh, i love being a green beret i mean there's nothing more uh, i just absolutely love it the camaraderie the friendships the the mission you name it it's just truly phenomenal a lot more and more veterans are entering the workforce as wounded warriors how do you mm-hmm. how has that affected your transition into the world of business well uh, my transition was crazy. Um, I'll, I'll start a little back and tell you what happened. Sure. Uh, and, um, you know, but, but just, just briefly in answer to your question, let me answer that. Then I'll, I'll give you in on, on, on how my transition happened. Uh, but bottom line, it, it's, it's a challenge. You have uh, medical appointments, you have, uh, you know, physical ailments, you have, uh, uh, most people that were wounded when a bomb goes off, it just doesn't blow up the, 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 the wounded guy. You know, there may be three wounded guys. There may be, uh, you know, uh, and in my, in my case, four KIAs, you know, so not just the physical, uh, you may have a, a, a wounded warrior with a missing arm, mm-hmm. but the emotional uh, distress that he or she uh, has gone through can be tenfold. And in the segment of the transition that I think we're failing at significantly is the military family. I give this analogy in speeches that I've done. When the bomb goes off in Afghanistan at the doorsteps at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, or wherever that home may be, the explosion is 10 times as big. That young wife, that young family member, they – they don't have the, the training. They don't have the, the understanding. They're scared. They're about to lose their loved one, and, and, and they don't know. Like when case of my wife, she got the knock on the door. They actually came to the door, which is, is odd in the, 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 the wounded world. Uh, they usually won't come to the door, but they came to the door in my case, and they told her, you need to move to San Antonio tomorrow. And for a 28-year-old young lady with two kids, that's scary wow. stuff. And so, so I, I believe that um, 
the strength of the military family uh, really, really plays a tremendous amount in the strength of the transition. Uh, and um, so a transitioning service member uh, isn't, isn't, it's not just a service member, it's a family as well. I, I, I give another analogy all the time. So when you, you see that wounded warrior in a wheelchair, may, maybe an amputee, maybe a burn victim, maybe just a paralysis, whatever it is, before you go and shake his or her hand for their service, shake the person pushing a damn chair's hand for their service because it's oftentimes the caregiver behind that wounded warrior that gets overlooked so much. And I believe that the strength of the military family is going to define – how well and how strong that transition goes. And, 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 and honestly, I think we miss the mark quite often. Um, and, and we focus so much on, on the individual as opposed to the collective family unit. And, um, but for me, getting through my transition, it was a lots of up and downs. You know, I had struggling trying to find a job. Uh, well, I take that back. There was plenty of jobs out there. It's just jobs that I wasn't uh, willing to take, mm-hmm. and that was my biggest problem. I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't understand why the guy at Lowe's wanted to start me at the paint counter, uh, and why I wasn't getting paid a hundred grand a year. You know, and uh, um, and so uh, you leave these jobs of tremendous responsibility in the military, and then you go to the paint counter at Lowe's. That's hard to accept, especially when you have some of these positions. You take an E8, E9, when the the E9 walking out of the the army, uh, uh, when he could have kept the whole battalion there to pick up cigarette butts until he got tired, right? And uh, um, now he's going to walk in the civilian world and nobody gives a crap who he is. It's hard for for people to accept that sometimes. And so for me personally, it was very difficult to accept the fact that my knowledge, skills, and abilities that I had as an Army Special Forces Warrant Officer, a commander of men, did not directly portray into a job that I physically can do as a severely wounded service member. And um, until I accepted that and until I was willing to start at the bottom and climb a ladder that I've already climbed, well, with that, and that, that's when I, I started to do well, when I, when I realized that uh, uh, no matter what I need to do, I'm going to have to start at the bottom in order to get to that top again. Right, right. There was a point where you, you had to have become interested in real estate and said, there's something about this that's calling me. Tell me about that time, the moment that you realized this is something yep. that's attracting you. You know, that's. I'm glad you asked that question because uh, I, truly, I was. So here I was. Okay, um, I was getting out of the army. I had already applied for a few jobs. Uh, a couple of them, uh, I was turned. I did. I didn't get one of them. I I got, but I didn't think it was good enough. And uh, um, I started taking a lot of pain pills. Uh, you know, I was taking probably more than I should at the time. Uh, yeah, I'm still a wounded dude. Don't get me wrong, but. Um, you know, it's just, you know, it is what it is. And so um, I wasn't in a good space. I had uh, bought a house in, in San Antonio uh, and um, I just wasn't going in the, the right direction. A friend of mine, he said, Levi, why don't you why don't you sell that house in North Carolina? And, and what's crazy, I was like, oh, shit, the, um, the, uh, the house in North Carolina. Um, and so what we did is we found the real estate agent that sold it to us. When, when, when my wife and I were, we first got married, um, I was uh, stationed. I was in the Q course. It was uh, 1998-ish. Um, and um, we decided to buy a house like most, most of our people will do when they get out of the, the special forces qualification course. So they'll, they'll buy a house. And so, uh, we were looking for a home and we, we found one. It was a double wide trailer. It had a jacuzzi tub and, uh, we met the listing agent out there and, uh, it was right by Fort Bragg. It was like 58,000 bucks. So we we're going to use the VA loan. And the agent said, son, don't buy this house. It's going to go down in value, not up. I was like, well, all right, but but we like it. And he said, "No, you, you don't buy this house. Let me take you to another place." Mm-hmm. And so I said, "Okay." So he took us to another house. It um, it wasn't as nice. It had blue carpets. It was, it was missing a window. It just wasn't the greatest home. Uh, but he said, "Son, if you buy this house, it's the same price, and the long term prospects of this area." Are, have tremendous upside potential as you know compared to the other place. Plus, it's not a double wide. And I said, okay, makes sense. Um, let's do it. So I did it. He gave me a list of things to do. He gave, got me linked up with people that do those things, and we did it. 
I stayed in that house for the rest of my military career. Well, fast forward 10 years later or 12 years later when I eat a bomb and get blown up, what happened is when we go to sell this, I contacted that same realtor and he remembered me. We sold that house for $150,000 gain. And wow. that's when I realized that 30 seconds of honesty from a, a real estate agent can impact a soldier's family's life forever. And that's six weeks later, I had my real estate license and I felt that God was pointing me to be getting this business. And every single day of my life since then, we've applied that same 30 seconds of honesty to all of the military and veterans uh, here in San Antonio, Texas, and it, it's turned into a huge business. And so right now, we, we did about $95 million worth of residential real estate last year. Uh, and we... Um, I have, uh, I think, 27 people here in San Antonio and two in Colleen, Texas right now. Uh, and uh, I'll be in every military city in America in five years. Wow. That is remarkable. That is very remarkable. I have a friend of mine who we were deployed together, and he really wanted to become a real estate agent for exactly mm -hmm. the reasons you just talked about. You know, his thing was a real estate agent is selling you a home. And for most people, a home is a dream. It's the place mm -hmm. where they're going to raise their family. He said he wanted to be part of that. He says the real estate agent is for a moment while they're in that process, they are part of your family. And he wanted to be part of that, that, that big event of purchasing a home. I didn't understand what the hell he was talking about until right. I had to buy my own home. And I realized like, oh my God, this real estate agent is literally the dude that is helping me shape my future. I never realized how important this one person was gonna be in my life. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I, I give a, I've created a whole program called BAH to Multimillionaire, how to maximize your basic allowance for housing to set the conditions so you can retire as a multimillionaire. And I've created this whole, this whole program. And what I've done is I've created analogies throughout the whole process to take the, the young service member and, and his or her family and say, hey, you've got this basic allowance for housing. Let's teach you how to make smart real estate decisions decisions, not, uh, you know, ones that are going to put you in a pickle and a bind, you know, uh, make decisions that not only you can get into, but you can get out of both in a good market and a bad market. I call that the, you know, the infiltration versus the exfiltration. And uh, I, I, I just, I, I've taken basically the whole military decision-making process, chopped it all up, merged that with the, the real estate process, uh, and really have created some awesome and creative ways to teach our people in language that they understand how to make smart real estate decisions. Because Never before in our nation's history have our servicemen and women been taken care of as well as they are today. Mm -hmm. There's always room for improvement. Don't get me wrong. However, our people get taken care of pretty damn well. Uh, and so uh, what happens if you make these smart real estate decisions, it's the regular person's way to build and grow wealth. Uh, where people get chalked up is so uh, they'll go buy a half million dollar house in Colleen. Probably not the right place to be doing that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, and, you know, let's buy just what you need, maybe a little bit under, keep it as a rental property and stack them up. And uh, uh, for me, that's done very, very well. And I've created several millionaires in real estate aside from me, um, just teaching them how to do smart real estate. And it's been pretty, pretty phenomenal feeling to be able to do that for people. That's awesome. You were a real estate agent six weeks after you purchased your home. How long after that, were you running Levi Rogers Real Estate Group? So here, here's what happened. So so I got got into real estate. I sold the home in North Carolina. Got my real estate license. Uh, went over. Uh, started out at a Remax, uh, not the one that I, I am now. Because right now I own Remax Military City, and the Levi Rogers Real Estate Group is the sales team at Remax Military City. So I'm kind of double dipping. I own a brokerage and the and a sales team. But smart uh, move. Smart uh, move. Well, well, yeah. I mean, and it also gives me the flexibility to make the decisions that affect the sales team. Mm -hmm. um, and so, either way, um, so started off and uh, it was about three year, two years, two years. So, so Levi Rogers, an individual, was going uh, for about two and a half years. I was out there running the streets, uh, just just hustling and selling houses. Uh, and I had a couple of assistants helping me with the, the flow of everything. Uh, but things really, really picked up in 20, 
2014, I started adding team members. And then uh, in 2015, late 2015, we opened up uh, uh, Remax Military City and, uh, and just went, went out on our own and, and started making things happen. That's amazing. A lot of veterans want to jump into different markets. They want to jump into different industries without mm -hmm. first gaining experience in those industries. Let me let me tell you that. So I was in a partnership uh, that was about to open up a chicken wing franchise, and uh, uh, one of the gentlemen in the partner who I respect dearly. I, I, I love this dude. And uh, um, I said, I came up with the idea. I said, hey, why don't we all go get jobs uh, at chicken wing franchises? We'll go work in the chicken wing franchise for six weeks to learn the business. You go to franchise A, I'll go to B, you go to C. We could all work there for six weeks, learn the industry for free or we'll get paid to learn the industry. And then what we do, we take the, the blessings that we have because we have the money to, to open up our own chicken wing business. And we learn, we, we do a reconnaissance of sorts. And so right. you have to be willing to start at the bottom. So many of our people, one of the biggest problems is that we want to start at the top. And no matter what your rank was, no matter what position of authority you had in the military, one of the hardest things that I see is uh, our people trying to transition to a similar level, similar level of authority. I do think the general officers and the senior uh, command sergeants major can do that uh, just because of the, the way some of the government contracts and things work. However, for the most of us, if you're a mid-grade officer or a mid-grade NCO, uh, it's hard. It's so hard to, to go into uh, – uh, you walk into my office as an E7 or E8, you're going to start at the bottom and learn the business. Now, the reason you have the opportunity is because of your military experience, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give that to you, and you're going to climb that ladder far faster than most civilians probably will because of your experience. But you have to have enough humility and to be a humble enough to start at that bottom once again. And, um, you know, the, the knowledge, skills, and ability that you have – have as a as as a uh, a high performing infantry service or, or sergeant first class or a, or a E eight and a, you know logistician or whatever it may be, um, the may not convey directly into the industry that you want to be in. You may get lucky, you know, if you're a logistician and roll right into a logistics job. Well, it may work out for you, you know, but the truth of the matter is most of the time it doesn't. And you have to be humble enough to, to start at the beginning. And that would be my biggest advice. And that was the biggest mistake I made in the beginning was thinking that I was going to walk right into, you know, a six figure job that, that no, I got laughed out of all the businesses. Mm -hmm. And that's that's so true. It, and it's that experience that really makes or breaks that entrepreneurial jump. When you think about it, because unless you know those ins and outs, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I um, I remember when I talked to my real estate agent in Texas because I had bought I had purchased a home in Colleen. Um, I, my simple question was, "Hey, the front yard looks empty. Should I plant a tree?" And this guy's like, "Absolutely, you should plant a tree. And here's the tree you should plant. But you also have this option of a tree." And this guy starts going off about like 25 different trees. Then he starts telling me these bushes don't grow here in Colleen. You want these bushes. These will live. These will die. These will seasonal. These will do this. And I'm like, bro, are you an, are you an, uh, a tree expert? I mean, I actually asked him like, do you have a degree in, uh, what is it? Arbor, Arboretum or Arbor, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, and he says, that's funny. He says, no, he said, this is the kind of stuff you need to know as a real estate agent. Yep. Because if you don't know about the trees, you don't know about the soil, you don't know about the paint, you don't know about the, the builders, you will fail at this job. And I yep. was like, wow, I had no idea he had to know all this stuff. Yeah, that's, that's funny you mentioned that because I, I tell people that the first upgrade that they need to do on any home is walk in that backyard, look left, look right, and look beyond. And where they feel that there's a compromise in privacy, they need to plant something. The establishment or, or verification of privacy through vegetation is the first upgrade that anybody needs to do on any home. 
because of the time that it takes for that, that stuff to grow and things of that nature. Uh, there's so many things that you can do to a home when you purchase it that will set the conditions for a future resale. And so don't let so much time pass you by. And mm -hmm. then, you know, and I think people should do a major upgrade on their home every three years, you know, so they don't get caught up with trend changes and so forth as well. Yeah, I had no idea how much a tree cost either. I was like, bro, are you serious? They're like, yeah. oh, yeah, this tree is going to cost you $500. Like, 500 It's a tree. Yeah. It's just That's a right. I had no idea. But so yeah. jumping into the real estate business, this is a very attractive industry uh, that is real estate. But it's also a an industry that has spooked a lot of people. The housing bubble burst and all these movies came out about shysty – uh, real estate agents, shysty real estate companies, and even shystier banks loaning to the wrong people, and then whatnot, whatnot, whatnot. How has that – and that happened several years ago. How is it? Almost like 10 right. years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. How has that stigma of buying a home affected you today? Has that changed? Is it changing? What, what's your What's your take on that? Well, I think that right now, I mean, there, there's been several pieces of legislation put in place to protect the consumer. Uh, you have the Dodd-Frank bill, which uh, is certainly controversial. Uh, however, it's in place and it's the law. Uh, the Dodd-Frank bill offered tremendous protections for the, um, the consumer. Uh, furthermore, uh, you have the uh, CFPB, the Com New Com uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, there's tremendous legislation that the United States government has put in place to protect the consumer. Uh, mostly what I deal with here is government-backed loans, VA and FHA, uh, and uh, conventional loans as well. Uh, these conforming loan types, the, the conventional loan, the FHA, the VA, uh, these loan types are very safe for the consumer to get these days. If you qualify for those loans, you, you, you're, you're, you're going to be good to go. Now, you may make some decisions later that adversely affect your ability to pay for that, and nobody can predict that. Saying that, though, um, you know, the lenders are required to go in there and identify debt-to-income ratios, do credit checks. They, they, they'll even pull the credit at the end of the file, a day before closing, to make sure that, you know, Sergeant Jones didn't go buy, you know, furniture on his star card 50 minutes before the closing, right? And so um, there's so many um, – uh, checkpoints and balances within it today that I personally and professionally feel that everybody buying a home today on a VA, FHA, or conventional loan is is doing so without any predatory lending and doing so in a, in a very safe environment. Uh, uh, there, there's a tremendous government oversights on these where you get mixed up is if you start if you can't qualify for one of those loans you know you still have you know sergeant sergeant jones that wants to go out there and buy a house his wife or or her or however is set up mm -hmm. you know him or her um and says hey i still want to own a home i mean it's still the american dream people want to be homeowners i i tell people there's two types of people in america and that's homeowners and future homeowners and uh um because mo the majority of people want to want to own a home you know, and now there's some exceptions to that, but but the, the thing is, is that when you get chalked up in these wraparound mortgages or these owner finance deals, that's when you got to be careful. And so, if you're going to a legit banking institution, you know, uh, it, I mean, USAA is a great bank, Bank of America, you know, all these different banks that uh, are out there. But I would highly recommend that you talk to your real estate professional. You got to understand that, that real estate agents are, are licensed. You know, real estate agents, and then if you have uh, uh, a realtor, somebody has taken an oath to, to uh, abide by certain uh, uh, guidelines and codes of ethics and so forth, they, they can't lie to you. They're going to steer you in the in the right direction to make sure that you have all the choices available to where you can make a more of an informed decision uh, and go from there. But if you're doing a VA loan in this environment. You, you're going to be good if you get approved. You know, it's uh, you know the Department of Veterans Affairs has tremendous oversight and tremendous regulations that they put on these lenders so that the veteran doesn't get, you know, screwed over. You know, um, so from the perspective of an entrepreneur in the real estate industry, what did not go according to plan or the way you thought it would go? 
Well, a lot. Uh, I'm learning every day, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, the thing, what, what I didn't, uh, what surprised me was how, how quick, how quick people would follow. And the, the thing is, is that I, I got into real estate. I saw the performance of a, 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 a lady in the office that was kicking butt. You see, when I got into real estate, I didn't realize that all, there was all this money to be made. I had no idea. I got into real estate because I wanted to help my people. And then that's still it. Making money is just part of it. Honestly, I give most of it away and put it back in the business to tell you the truth. I've certainly saved some for my family, but that, that's it. I, I, um, I, I want to help my people. And so I didn't get into real estate to make all, all kinds of money. I didn't even know you can make a whole bunch of money in real estate uh, to tell you the truth. And so, but I was sitting there in the office one day and I saw uh, the, the numbers for the company and I probably shouldn't have saw them. They were from when I was at the regular Remax and I saw how much money one of these real estate has made and it blew my mind. I was like, whoa, you can make this much money. Um, and, uh, uh, and then she goes, well, yeah, you should have saw what she made last month. And I was like, whoa, geez. And, uh, uh, and so what went what surprised me the most is that when I started marketing to go ahead and create a, a business, how quick people would follow uh, and how quick people wanted to join up what I was doing. You see, I was helping veterans in San Antonio before it came cool. And the thing is, is that, uh, uh, you know, and I feel that I was doing it the right way. When I when I named the company Remax Military City, there was a lot of people between me and the decision makers at Big Remax that said, Levi, that's a that's a that's a bad idea to call it Remax Military City. Uh, you're you're targeting yourself. I said, you know, I really don't care. I'm here to help my people. I want people to know that they can go somewhere uh, and 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 feel comfortable. When you when you walk off our elevator and you come in our office, you'll see our company guide on. I mean, uh, this is a military that's unit, rad. and that's just the way <laughs> it is. Um, and so I want our people to know that you know what you can be who you are, you know, and still win and the thing i walk around here barefoot with a baseball cap with a headset on all day um and i'm out here hustling uh, it doesn't mean it's going to work that way for every industry don't get me wrong don't mm -hmm. walk into the financial services industry barefoot to a job interview i'm not i'm not saying that but uh, or, or but, do but anyways it. yeah yeah <laughs> or go for so, it so but the, the thing that i would say is that people how quick people would follow and and I truly believe at this point that God left me on this earth to, to help my people. Um, I I have fell into this industry, uh, you know, almost by accident. But I have put in the time to gain just a tremendous amount of knowledge, skills, and ability in such a tight, uh, uh, segmented, and difficult difficult aspect of the real estate industry. The veteran, uh, the veteran, you know, uh, real estate, uh, um, you know, portion of the real estate industry. Uh, and um, the biggest thing was uh, getting so the surprise was how many people would follow so quick uh, and uh, how fast the brand would go. Uh, uh, to be honest, I mean, I go out in the streets in San Antonio and every day there will be two to three people that stop me and say, hey, Levi, how you doing? Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and I didn't realize the power of social media. I didn't realize just, just how quick it would, would blow up. And, uh, um, and so that brings me into one other thing. One of the, one other tip I would tell any other veteran business owner is that we've got two speeds. We've got rest and refit and 100 miles an hour. Understand it. If you operate at 100 miles an hour in marketing, you got to be careful never to out advertise your capability because if you go full speed ahead – and you better be prepared for the phone to ring. And when that phone rings and you can't satisfy that demand, it'll have an adverse effect. And that has right. happened to me a couple times in this business. And it's very, very difficult thing to, to project. You know, how much marketing dollars do I put in today to make sure that I can, I can satisfy and I have the personnel that's trained to the quality I need them trained to be able to, to, to meet our mission and our goals and our core values. And, uh, um, it's a difficult balance, at least in real estate. It's very hard to project. It's, uh, I give the analogy that like, uh, uh, you know, real estate's like a gunfight, you know, you, you go and you're out on your patrol and you got your plan and you got your operations order and you're expecting three to five guys with AKs on objective, but then you get to the objective and there's like 50 people with tanks and you're like, Oh shit, what do I do now? You got all these tanks and all these people to get no plan survives execution, but you got to be able to have your principles of patrolling to keep 
keep you in line so you can accomplish that mission without uh, uh, violating any of those principles. And right. so same thing in business world. Establish your lane. Stay in it. Um, you're going to hit speed bumps and potholes along the way. Keep your foot on the gas, and you'll keep going, and you'll succeed. And uh, I, I think that the military and veteran community has such a tremendous opportunity. Uh, I think this is the most entrepreneurial generation of warfighters ever to walk the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's just, it, it, you know, our people are out there kicking butt on every aspect, uh, whether it's a, a Black Rifle Coffee Company, whether it's a Article 15 Clothing, a Ranger Up. Uh, those guys are the true leaders in, in our uh, circles and have provided so much inspiration. And uh, um, it's one of the reasons why, I I mean, my personal mission statement is to show the world that my people can do it too, but specifically show my people that they can do it too. Uh, And I think we all have a responsibility to our people. That's awesome. So right now, I'm talking. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. I keep going and going and going. Bro, okay. this is the this is the podcast. This is the this is the best thing. You can talk all you like. It's your right, hour. Okay, your hour. Okay. So right now, there's a there's a young soldier. There's a veteran who's listening to you right now, and he's like, God damn, that guy is super fired up about real estate. I'm super fired up about real estate. I'm gonna do this. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm. This is where I'm going. What's your advice to that young person? who wants to jump into your industry, whether to work for you or go work for somewhere else, what should they know before they jump into real estate? Well, that's a good question. I I think that they should know it's not easy. It's not a get rich quick. Uh, Right now in San Antonio, there's 11,000 real estate agents in San Antonio, Texas. To be quite honest, I mean, you know, to be quite honest, there's probably about, um, I I don't know, a thousand of us that have, you know, very consistent, you know, you know, continual businesses. And there's about 20 of us that have huge businesses. Um, depends on what your goals are, right? Um, you know, my company, I have 27 people here, you know, and that's just in San Antonio. Uh, and, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, um, don't think it's a get rich quick industry. It's not. It is absolutely not. And uh, uh, learn your trade craft, learn your skills. And then once you learn your skills, invest in your skills. And uh, there's nothing worse than a real estate agent that doesn't own a home. You know, like like you're going to sell homes and, and tell people how great that it is to be a homeowner and, and why they should be a homeowner and you don't own a home yourself. I mean, that's that's just bananas. And so, um, so go be a homeowner. Learn your skill, learn your industry, and go dominate it. And don't be afraid of, of succeeding. And you know, if you're in San Antonio, Texas, I absolutely would give you a shot at my company. Um, every I have a program called Bullets to Buildings, uh, where we take it's a DOD approved. It's pretty awesome. Where we help uh, military and veterans that are transitioning out of the Army um, to uh, um, to come work at our company while they're transitioning out and learn this skill. The problem we always run into is that you know they they want a lot of our guys, they want to, they want to, we're hard charging, let's go conquer the world. They, they, you know, they want to go win and they want to run up to the mountain, you know, without, uh, you know, taking the steps, you know? And so, um, it's, uh, uh, I think going to industry, there's no industry in the world, in my opinion, that requires a minimal financial investment that real estate does with so much upside potential. Um, but you got to learn this stuff first. And so if you're anywhere in the world, I uh, absolutely will talk with you. You can reach out to me on Facebook's probably the best way. Um, but uh, I'll absolutely talk with you and help you get going. Uh, I've been so blessed with, through my relationships with Zillow and Remax and just personal and professional relationships. I've got teams like that I work big, big teams, hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate a year that I work with in every city and every state across the country, uh, even into Canada, Central South America and Europe. Uh, I've got a pretty big network of people. So um, I know a lot of like minded folks in the industry throughout the world world i'd be more than happy to get you on the right path um so that you can learn your trade craft and uh and go out there and just kick butt and never let anybody tell you that you can't uh, accomplish uh, what it is that you want uh, real estate is one of these industries that nobody can stop you and it's all about battlefield performance just like just like you know like we we had this guy all right so i won't mention his name but 
I was on on an ODA, uh, and this guy was probably one of the best medics in the freaking world. If you got shot in the leg, you want this dude on you, right? But the dude can never show up to time to work. Like, he was always, always late. It doesn't matter how great of a warfighter you are if you don't show up to the damn gunfight. Same thing. It doesn't matter how great of a real estate agent you are. It doesn't matter how great of a soldier you were. If you don't show up every day, put your pants on and go to work. If you want to sleep in until 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, you're probably not going to make millions in real estate. But if you want to get to work at 7 a.m. and hustle and be ready to go kick life in its ass, you're going to win in any industry that you go in. And um, uh, all I've done is implement what the Army taught me into an industry. And boom. I mean, I own a construction company. I own houses. Uh, I'm investing in all kinds of other little things that we got going on. Um, I've got, I flip a lot of houses. It all just started to, 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 to compound, you know, and uh, never sell yourself short. You can accomplish anything. And if you're thinking about this industry, give me a call. Shoot me a text, Facebook, you name it. We'll, we'll help you out. I got one final question for you. And it's, I don't know if it's a really a question, but you met uh, one of the guys, one of my, I call him a digital mentor, <laughs> Mr. Vaynerchuk. Yep. And he's one of those people who I got, I got on his videos and it's one of the reasons I actually started this podcast was because he kept saying, do the thing that you're good at, double down on those skill sets, keep doing what you're doing, hit that nine yep. to five. And that's what I've been doing. I work at Jido. I, you know, nine to five in it all day long trying to do this thing. What did you talk about? What were you two (laughs) chatting about? So here's the deal. So uh, I sit in an airport, right? And I've been watching Gary V for a long time. Let let me tell you what happened and then tell you the story. So when I first got to Remax, when I first came and became a real estate agent, I, they heard about my story, blown up Green Beret, you know, blah, 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 blah. So they invited me to do a keynote speech at the Texas Remax, the Remax of Texas convention. I had my real estate license like a week. And so I didn't really know what I was talking about or anything, but I was supposed to go talk. So I started Googling Remax keynote speeches. Well, up popped Gary Vaynerchuk, delivered a keynote speech at the big Remax convention a year prior. So I watched that thing like 10 times. And Mm so I started learning. So I've been following the guy ever since. Now that was in 2011, 2012. So then fast forward to today, I think Gary's grown and got huge. I mean, he's big. And so I was sitting in an airport and I would follow his stuff all the time. And up pops this thing. It says, eat dinner with Gary V for $10,000. And I'm like, $10,000. All right, not that big deal. Hmm, Gary V. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, and uh, so I said, I'm going to go meet with Gary V. But you know what? I'm going to go motivate his ass. And and so that's what happened. So we get there. Fast forward. I'm sitting at this dinner table where there's six other people. And, and these people, I did not fit in in terms. I mean, we had – there was some heavy heavyweight people there, man. I mean, there was – I'm not going to disclose the people that were at the table. But there, there was some big – business billionaire type people at the table right and they because they all wanted their time with gary v and so they're going around the table and they're they're like hey so gary was like hey bob what do you want hey tom what'd you come here for they get around to me and i said gary i'm here to, to challenge you i came here to motivate you i don't really need your motivation you've been a tremendous motivator to me i follow you religiously i've learned tremendous amount of stuff from you however you have such a tremendous impact and capability to get people to do what it is that you want them to do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And motivate people to either get off their ass or continue fighting forward that I think you can help me solve a huge problem that's facing a community that's really important to me. And everybody's looking like, what the fuck? This guy just came here and called Gary V out. And I said, 15 September 2009, I was severely wounded in Afghanistan. I told him about my four guys that were killed, mm-hmm. who I live every day for. When you walk in my company, you walk out my company, there's a memorial for my men. It's, it's my motivation every day. It's my fuel. And I said, I told him a story about how I transitioned into becoming a multimillionaire, you know, and how businesses all came and all this other stuff. And I said, 
unfortunately, Gary, far too many of our veterans and military members and family members are utilizing suicide as a method to solve their problems. Gary, I think with my capability and understanding of the military veteran wounded warrior community that I can give you that knowledge and together you and me can help people not use suicide as an option. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I spent $10,000 to go meet with Gary V. And then Gary V said, you're damn right. I'll work with you on this. And so right now we're working to get our times and stuff together, do some videos or whatever it is uh, that we decide to do. Um, but I think that that man right there has probably one of the, he's going to be one of known as one of the great motivators of our generation. I agree. And, and it will be a shame if I can't get him to take what I've learned and the, the network I have in the veteran uh, benevolence and just wounded warrior, wounded, ill and injured, uh, you know, support and assistance uh, to where I can get him to go speak and talk to our people or do some high impact stuff to help our people. Uh, I just thought it would be a great opportunity. And so uh, that's so why glad. I met with him. I'm so glad that you did. I was I, I, I you know, when I saw the picture of you and Gary V. Uh, first of all, I was ridiculously jealous. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> super jelly. Second, I thought it was great that he met a veteran, um, yep. especially a veteran of your stature. You represent the very finest that that uh, that is in the United States military. One of my th one of my things, and 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 I, I hope maybe you can convey this question or this concern to him, is that he talks a lot about entrepreneurship. Go out there, do it, kill it, yada yada, kill Monday. Don't live for Friday. But what I don't hear a lot from him is how many veterans does VaynerMedia employ? How many veterans are on the Vayner sports staff? How many veterans – to me, if you're a CEO and I ask you how many veterans does your company employ and you can't answer me, there's a right. problem. You may not – people like him – who are super smart, so connected, they may not be aware of what we bring to the table, what every one of my veterans brings to the fight. Mm -hmm. We bring skill sets, we bring age, we bring experience, we bring, and this is something that I was talking to yesterday, uh, talking about yesterday in another interview with uh, one of my other guests, is the one thing that, that separates vets from the civilian world is we are so used to getting our asses kicked on a yeah. daily basis. The failure is like, are you serious? That's it. You get shot at, you get blown up, you get tossed around, you get thrown into countries and situations that you're not familiar with. So when somebody's like, Hey man, that, that deal fell through. It's like, Oh, okay, well let's keep on going. Whereas that would crush somebody else. We're just like, Oh, well, big fucking yep. deal. I mean, <laughs> guess what? I woke up today and I, didn't get shot at. It's a good day. Uh, absolutely. And you're 100% you're right. I, I tell the people that every person in our community has an obligation to show the world just what we can do. Because I, I personally believe that all these benevolent organizations, and I'm not going to, the benevolence has done very good uh, overall and really raised a lot of light to a lot of problems. But but I think that right now we have a responsibility as as a veteran community to show the 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 world what they got out of all the money and commitment mm -hmm. that they've given to us you know all right here's what all the free hunting trips got you here's what all the money to yeah. this project and that project got you instead of showcasing all the bad let's start showcasing the good because you know what we're going to do we're going to motivate those guys that are sitting at home wondering if today's the day that they should eat it or not yeah. and you know i think it's a responsibility of all of our people out there whether 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 it's me on on, on my my small scale or, or one of the bigger companies you know that have gone out there uh and done amazing things um it's our responsibility to show our people and show the world just how great we are so when when that ceo uh gets that opportunity next time that they see a a, 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 a an application and or a resume and it may not have all the college degrees that are that are typically required yeah. maybe that that five minutes with levi rogers changes their mind like you know what that guy that said fuck every other five minutes that runs a freaking big business and doesn't have shoes um you know maybe i'll give this guy an opportunity because that guy levi he he told me a little bit about the the army and and how that helped him with business etc yeah. etc et and and you know and then the other thing is is becoming of us within our circles to be home 
humble enough to start at the bottom. You know, it, we have to be able to accept to start at the bottom. And then, you know, and I think another contributing factor is, you know, I hear this is like, hey, Levi, why would I go start and learn real estate with you and make, you know, 10, 15 bucks an hour to learn the industry when I can sit at home on, and, and get Social Security for the same amount? And, 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 and our people, a lot of our people, are not all of our people, don't get me wrong, yeah, some, um, some. you know, but we, we hear that. And, yeah. and and, and, you know, and it, it frustrates me because I'm like, you're better than that. You can go out there and kick ass, man. Don't let anybody hold you down. And uh, well, uh, you could conquer things. It's just like the argument that I've received about this podcast. Well, why are you doing this podcast? How much money are you making? I tell them I made a, a whopping $25 last year. $25. Yep. And that's because I sold uh, some on it products through my affiliate network. They're like, you know. You're, you're spending all this time and effort on $25. And I'm like, listen, you can do your nine to five and retire. And everybody wants to live. And like, I, I swear to God, it sounds like hell to me. But they're like, I just want to fish and sleep and do that. That's that's all I want to do. I'm going to retire and that's it. I'm like, I don't want, I want, I want big money problems. I want yep. to have six different shows going on eight documentaries we're producing. I want to have staff. I want to be able to say we're creating things for our veteran community and this is going to kick so much yep. ass. I that's the, those are the problems I want. And even if yep. it doesn't make me seven digits, if it makes me enough to be comfortable and happy, yep. provide for my family and I'm still contributing, that's all that matters. And I think that people like Gary V who have these amazing companies, this amazing vision, this great following, it kind of annoys me to hear so much about the 20 somethings. Oh, you know, he says, keep your head down to your, you know, to your, through your twenties. And Hey, guess what? Some of my guys are in their thirties. They've kept their head down. They're yeah. coming up. They're leaving the army after 10, 15 years. I left the army after 12. I did wow. uh, oh, close to 11, uh, 11 to some change. I got out and here I am, but I didn't, you know, I'm not 30, I'm not a 26 year old kid. I am a 37 year old man with a family and responsibility, but no matter what job you give me, I'm gonna kick its ass. I will learn. Absolutely. You want me to be a social media guy? I can learn that, boom, like that. I taught myself wow. how to do all this stuff. So thank you for being the, the ambassador that you are to the uh, rich, the famous, and the influential. They need to see you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and thank you for being the uh, the powerhouse that you are. You are a remarkable entrepreneur. And one last way, if somebody wants to get hold of you or learn more about uh, Levi Rogers, how do they do that? Well, I think the best way to get on get on Facebook, uh, it's Levi Rogers with the Rogers with the D R O D G E R S, as you see right here on the deal. Just get on Facebook, friend me, um, you know, uh, and then uh, hit, hit me up, you know, on Facebook. Uh, uh, we have an Instagram. I'm not too big on Twitter. Uh, I need to get better at that. But uh, Facebook, you know, it's kind of old school social media. But uh, uh, we've got our business page on Facebook, and then we have uh, our uh, a regular personal uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can reach out us there, or you can just call my office. Two one zero three three one seven thousand, uh, and you know, a fail safe. Just Google me. There's lots of stuff on there on the internet about uh, you know our story and so forth. But uh, um, I think it's uh, becoming of our, our people to write the story of uh, what what happened with this generation. Uh, there's tremendous donor fatigue within all the benevolent circles right now, and I believe it's because the donors out there ha have not seen the true capability of what what our people can do 100%. and are doing and so if, if you're out there kicking life in its ass don't be shy about it share that story and go show the world just how great our people are um, and I do believe that future generations of uh, uh, war fighters their survivability and warfare and so on and so forth will will be judged and, and be defined by the strength of the military family and so take care of those families out there because without those wives without those kids without those husbands without the mothers and, and whatever your family network supporting the veteran is uh, we wouldn't have nowhere near what we have today. And uh, uh, I believe that the, the, the military support network uh, really owes a lot to the military family. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you again, uh, Levi Rogers, for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to talk with me today. Uh, yeah. This has been a remarkable hour. Thank you again. 
and I will be talking with you very soon. Awesome. Hey, thanks a lot. And I'm going to give Gary those messages for you. I'm gonna, I I'm appreciate gonna, I'm gonna, that. I'm going to make that happen. Don't Let's be surprised do if I get Gary. I'm going to get Gary on your podcast. I don't know how yet, but I'm going to make that happen. Folks, that was Levi Rogers of Remax Military City. Folks, if you're looking to buy a home and you're in the San Antonio area, you got to check out the Remax Military City folks. They will set you straight. They are honest, top-notch folks that will get you into the house that you really want, the house that you deserve, the house that you can afford. That's also really important. So check them out, Remax Military City. Uh, all the links will be in the show notes. Uh, this episode is brought to you, of course, by... Seabag Locker Coffee, freshest coffee this side of the seven seas from roast to your cup in as little as four days. Go check them out at seabaglocker.com. Use promo code AAR. Get 10% off your purchase. This episode is also brought to you by another coffee brand. Not a really coffee brand, but these guys know what you need to make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere in the world. We're talking about the Java can, folks. It is an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system you can Brew a cup of coffee in your backyard or mountain peak in Afghanistan. It is designed by another Green Beret who understood the value of drinking a cup of coffee with his teammates in the most remote places in the world. You got to check it out, thejavacan.com. Use promo code AAR, get 10% off that purchase. Folks, we are quickly approaching episode 50. Who is it going to be? Who's going to be my guest at episode 50? It's going to be It's going to be great. I promise it's going to be a doozy. You're going to love it. That does it for me. That does it for me. I hope you enjoyed this episode, folks. I will see you at the next one. That would be episode 49, I believe. Whoa. Danger close to 50. Super danger close to 50. All right. That's good. I'll see you at episode 49.